Hey everyone, it's Michelle and Michael, and we're back with episode episode five, five of Moss Music TV. Michael has convinced me to come out here in this 90 degree heat, where we've got about 30 minutes before the mosquitoes start to attack us. So let's go. We did it. Lots of stuff has happened since the last time we saw you. We had that whole Omicron situation, which we made it through. Um, we made it through South Bay, which we hadn't had one in two years, and it was really fun. So cool to see the city alive again. It wasn't too overcrowded. Um, I got to throw some really good showcases, reconnect with a bunch of people who i would worked with in the past. Some great Canadian bands came through. Bad Waitress, definitely check them out. Michael just graduated. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you. And... Well, this episode consists of a lot of stuff for you. Uh, we start with the live set with Sunbuzz out of Austin's very own Far Out Lounge. They are a great band. They're amazing. They have their own take on Dark Psych. They're going to find it really interesting. Everything from their stage performance to just them in general. They are out of Denton. Yeah, this kind of like a sister city to Austin. Um, so those bands will come down and we'll set up shows for them. And then we'll go up there and they set up shows. And the Sunbuzz people, specifically Ellie, who was the drummer, is really involved in the whole scene up there. And any bands that are touring, highly recommend that you go through and think about stopping in Denton. After that, Michelle sits down with Sunbuzz for a very good interview where they talk about everything from the establishment of the band to their pandemic release of their record. Yes, so this has been a recurring theme if you haven't figured out pandemic band releases. And next, this is like the coolest thing that's, like the biggest thing that's ever happened for Moss Music TV. We have an interview with LA Witch. It's 25 minutes of goals, y'all. It was 45 minutes and it was all such good content. It was really difficult to like cut it down. They don't really do a lot of live interviews, so I felt really fortunate that they were willing to sit down with us and kind of spill the tea. It's just anybody who's in a band, thinking about starting a band, has been in a band and quit, um, just watch this thing. They have got so much good advice. They've been a band for almost 10 years. Our friend Kate McCoy did it and has like some experience just being on camera and podcasting, so she's such a great fit for this. Thank you, LA Witch. Thank you, Suicide Squeeze. Thank you, Zero Hour ATX for filming the original live set. Holly Calder from Glasgow for being our special guest interviewer. We love you. All right, I think that's it. Watch, and then before we forget, please subscribe, comment, like, do all share. those things, right? You know, like. We love yeah. your support, yes. guys. So we hope you enjoy it. We've got and more coming up. We've got more coming up. Right, and we'll see you when we see you next. Take care. Bye, the mosquitoes Bye, are coming. Guys. Bye, guys. Take it easy. <laughs> enjoy.
people, Michelle back here with Moss Music TV. We have just seen a fabulous set from our friends from Denton Sunbuzz. Why don't y'all introduce yourself and tell us what you play? Okay. I am Gotti and I play guitar. My name is Daniel and I play the keyboard. I'm Ellie and I play drums. I'm Lo and I play guitar and sing. So first thing to note here is there's no bass player mm -hmm. in your band. So you take care of all of that on the keys? Yeah, right. I do all like the low end registry on the, we call it the key base. The key base? The key right. basis. <laughs> <laughs> so then when you're creating your music, is that like, how does that work? Um, I mean. Like you and Ellie go together and still just like a, a, this if you have, it's usually it's drums and bass. For right. Yeah. I mean, it, I feel like it kind of, it helps because I can lock in stuff with the guitar players as well. It's kind of doing stuff melodically and maybe just like drop it a little bit. Right. Or but if something more rhythm-minded comes up, then me and Ellie can lock that in. And what have y'all been doing? How has Denton been? Like, what's your living situation? <clears throat> You're living in the Pearl Earl mm -hmm. house, right? Yeah. And then do you guys have like a studio in one of your homes that you guys practice at? We practice yeah. at his Yeah, house. I have the jam space on my house. Okay. Did this get released before COVID or did you guys have to do it? If I remember correctly, you had to, you were... It exploded on, on us. Yeah. <laughs> it happened like right when all the COVID stuff happened. Right when it, it was like... Yeah. If the release was supposed to be April 4th. Right. Mm -hmm. right. April 4th. Oh, yeah. It was literally like two weeks after the shutdown of everything. Two or three weeks after. And then this, so I remember when you signed with this label because I saw you play and I was like, oh, I'm going to sign this band. And like, you literally just signed with the <laughs> so, But it took a while for this album to come out. So did you go back and re-record a whole new album when you signed with them? Because you have like other like material from the past. That, mm -hmm. like, right. Did you release that first? We yeah. did that by ourselves, right. yeah. our first album, and so this was all new material with the uh, triptych. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And they did, like, oh, you guys have to see this, this is really beautiful. Like, I am a big fan of the, this is cool because this is a 10 by 10 insert, it looks like, or maybe like a 11 by 11 insert. And then you guys got beautiful colored vinyl. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, so lovely. Like, did you guys have a hard time picking your colors? Uh, I mean, it was we, actually pretty fun. Right? Yeah. Uh, just a lot of options, and then we all picked our favorites mm -hmm. before we showed up to band practice that day. And we're like, okay, everyone, show your favorite three, and then that was one of them. And we were all like, that one got the most stood votes out for everyone. Right. Else. It's yeah. a true democracy in some. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty easy. It wasn't hard. We we're like, yeah, we all like that one. Cool. Let's practice. And then who <laughs> did the artwork for you? Uh, oh, Coco Rina. Yeah, we actually got that. A uh, commission from an artist in Greece. Oh, yeah. Very Greece. cool. How Greece. did you find that? I it's Greece. I think it's, it's Greece. Greece. It is Greece. Yeah. Um, Instagram. Right, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. a fan of her uh, art. Pinterest. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And then the title? That oh, yeah. was all. Oh, no, actually, that was all low. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, the offering. Right. The offering. Yeah. yeah. We had a, the altar and the, the altar in the last album on the back. And then it kind of played off that, and then I guess like Lo thought of, why don't we do like La Ofrenda, the offering. You yeah. call yourself a coven, so right. it's all sort of like fitting in. Yeah, it kind of goes with the yeah. theme. And right. And of... now you guys are from Denton, or you live in Denton, or did you go to school in Denton? <clears throat> we all live in Denton. Yeah. 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 We all grew up, uh, me and Gadi uh, grew up in the valley, um, McAllen, Texas, on the border. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Christian Thieler yeah. from the Rotten Mangoes from McAllen. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nine, five, six, baby. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. And then you're El Paso. Yeah, I grew up in El Paso, born and raised. With the Lake of Fire guy. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And and then, <laughs> I'm from Oak Cliff, Dallas area. Okay. Yeah. And how'd you end up in Denton? Uh, school. Oh, so you went to the music school? Uh, no, I, I went to, I have a degree in photography. Oh, okay. So I went to UNT and then they screwed me over with the money and then I went to TWU. So that's where I graduated from. Have you guys been able to be creative during this time? It was yeah. hard at first. I mean, honestly, yeah, yeah, it took it, some time. It was kind of like a we took a it pretty seriously. I mean, it was very right, hard because, for us yeah, because you had all of we the, had all right. of these like plans. Planning. Exactly, yeah. right. we were going to be doing something every single weekend. We had a yeah. very and busy. So right I think we wanted, to, we needed to step back for a yeah. little while and, and just like definitely absorb, regroup, and, absorb, uh -huh. yeah. group, and, and then now we're getting back into it. Yeah, we're already wanting to work on new material, so we'll still we'll still have this going, but. We're itching to do something different already. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that that album. This beautiful record. <laughs> Buy it. Love it. Play it. Hey, thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank you.
We're Sunbuzz, and you're watching Mass Music TV. This is Kate with Moss Music TV here with the amazing LA Witch. Hi. Hi, yo. How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> First off, welcome back to Austin. How long has it been since you've been here last? Probably like a few years. Three years? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. been a while. But... So you just played a sold out show at Hotel Vegas last night. How does it feel to be back on tour and back finally playing live shows again? It's still a little surreal. We're on we're still fresh, so like it, but it feels great. I mean, yesterday's show was awesome. The past few shows that we played have been great. I yeah. mean, Austin almost feels like another home to us because we have such a like great fan base out here, and a lot of our friends have bands here and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. It feels great to be here. So we're finally coming out of this pandemic. Can you take us back to March of 2020 when the shit hit the fan around the world? Um, what were your immediate thoughts and fears, and how did you manage to get through it initially? Um, well, we went to Six Flags for Shani's birthday, <laughs> and that was like right when we started getting cases. Yeah. yeah. I think we were all just trying to be as safe as possible, because we didn't know. I mean, obviously nothing like this has happened in our lifetime, mm -hmm. and you know, we re reading and looking at history, you see what they went through, so you can only try and take that information and yeah. know, see, play it safe, you know? And also we just didn't want to like, you know, be spreading whatever to people that were more vulnerable so we were yeah. just trying to be as safe as possible and follow like the rules so that it can just we can just try and get through it you know yeah um but it was scary because it's already when you're a musician your life is already so like you don't know what's going to happen in the future yeah and it's kind of hard to grasp like i guess I don't know, kind of gauge what, what was going to happen for our musicians during this time. Oh, so definitely. I think all of us just kind of tried to find some sort of structure or like just kind of any kind of work that we could. Yeah, it was a mess. Yeah. But also Six Flags sounds sick. I know. Was it, was it fun? <laughs> it was I love roller coasters and she, we got her to like get on some roller coasters so that was really cool. Oh, was how was it? Nice. She had just had surgery on her leg so oh, we were no. like in a wheelchair. Like, <laughs> was wheelchair. But it was cool because we got to the front of the line because she had like a, you know. <laughs> Oh man, what happened to your leg? It was like a corrective surgery. Got it. Yeah. yeah it was the last time we saw each other, I think, for like three months, because after that, everything kind of shut down. Yeah. And, you know, like we're used to like practicing, at least we see each other like fairly often. Yeah. So it was kind of a trip to like not like do that. Yeah. yeah. So looking back and drawing on that experience, do you think it's changed you as people? Um, do you think you have a different outlook on your goals as far as the band goes? I mean, I don't know. I feel like our goals are, for the most part, the same. Like, we mm -hmm. still want to achieve, like, the same things. We still want to tour. We still want to make music. We still want to evolve our sound and our musicianship mm -hmm. in any way that we could. Maybe, you know, there are certain topics that we might have thought about that we want to communicate a little differently or better. Yeah. You know, but I think, I mean, I'm sure everyone had a lot of time to really look inward and you know do some self growing with yeah. and I think everyone aware you know in a way kind of needed a break from reality or whatever yeah I mean we were touring heavily you know so it was it was kind of nice to have some time for ourselves sure so as a band who tours professionally how are you able we, we kind of tapped into this but how are you able to financially sustain yourself like was it you, like you mentioned having to you know yeah. grasp for any job that you could get? Yeah, I mean, I found a job. Um, it was a really strange job. I was working in a shipping. I mean, I had worked for this person before, so mm -hmm. I just called him, and he had already known me, nice. you know, from previous work. So he just hired me, and it was weird, you know, working this job that. I don't know, I guess like for the past few years I've been touring and only doing music stuff. Yeah. And I've always had like random gigs here and there, like I'm just kind of kind of person to find like weird odd jobs and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I was working a straight up like 12 hour shift seven days a week. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big adjustment. Yeah. What about y'all? How did you end up making it there? Well, uh, I, I opened two restaurants. You opened, opened two restaurants? Closed a bar, closed a bar and then opened a nightclub. So, really? Yeah, it was very busy. Wow. COVID. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have um? so you have a, you have a nightclub right now? Yes. It's yeah. in West Hollywood on the Sunset Strip. It's like bizarre. I've never really 
thought that's I'd fun. Up there. It's like bottle service. That's really fun though. What yeah. a cool endeavor. What about y'all? Well, I work for her. Oh, <laughs> I love that. And then I also do um, dog walking. So kind of I mean, I always wonder like, how do people do this? How do people live life? Yeah. How do people pay bills? Like, that's a nice car. What do you do for you know? Exactly. I always wonder things like that too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard too to like keep a job like when you're touring. Yeah. You tell them like I I have to go and. Sometimes you just like, you're like, well, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very fortunate if you do have a job that does let you you tour. Yeah. So you were sitting on an album release and tour before the pandemic, and then um, you know you decided to release the record anyway. What what made you decide to go ahead and release it without touring behind it? Well, basically, it, it was already scheduled to come out, and the way that our label has it done, it's like he has it very specifically like scheduled like in advance, like mm -hmm. probably like year year in advance. So that's just basically when it was scheduled to come out, which just happened to be during COVID time. So yeah. we couldn't actually tour on it. And it was really weird for us. Like we did a live stream show at Gold Diggers instead. Yeah. Oh, those are weird. Yeah. Live stream yeah, shows are so weird. They're, I understand the sentiment, but like, what, what was that like for y'all? Doing the live stream? Yeah. Um, we were all really hesitant to do it, but it was like, everyone was kind of asking us about it. So we're like, well, fuck it, let's try it, you mm -hmm. know? We chose Gold Diggers, and it was actually kind of cool. I mean, I don't know if we would do it something like that again, but it was it was a cool experience because for once we had the the opportunity to control our environment. So mm -hmm. as far as sound goes, or you know, like we said, we decorated the stage and made it like really spooky and put like you know candles and spider webs and yeah. we really got to dial in the sound of the performance yeah so you know we spent a few hours like you know mi mixing and adjusting levels yeah. and stuff so that was kind of cool because you don't really get to do that yeah you know? so it was just a different experience you definitely know? um it was weird to not play to a crowd um but we did get buy this like um dragon this like <laughs> giant dragon and Besides. we put it in the in this uh, audience, audience, so that at least we had so <laughs> you had something you were yeah. playing to. <laughs> like I wanted to get mannequins and like dress them all up and and you know pretend like that was like our cup. But mannequins, I they're like expensive. Yeah, so I was like, all right, yeah. Well, that's not gonna happen. So let's figure something else out. So you so, went with the giant dragon. Yeah, I mean, it just made sense <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, no, I love that. So this is your latest album, Play With Fire. Can you tell us a little bit about how the songs came about, like when they were written and what the process of writing it was like? Uh, two of the songs we were, we kind of already had that we were like touring with. But the whole rest of the album we had like a month to write. So we had just finished a tour and it was like, you have to record in like a month or two months. And oh man. It was like, okay, well. I guess we have some writing to do. Yeah. Do you find that like writing under pressure like that was easier or, or yeah. harder? I definitely lost my mind for sure, but it, I think it also was kind of cool because it didn't give you enough like time to like second guess yourself. Like it was more intuitive, I mm -hmm. guess. You had to write it and run with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I feel like as an artist, that's something that you tend to do a lot is you kind of second guess it and dissect it. And it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So what would you say your, your songwriting process is like? Is it um, like, do you, does the music usually come first or do you have like lyrics in mind or does someone have like a vocal melody? How does, how does, how do your songs usually come about? Well, I do a lot of writing on the road mm -hmm. because that's like the time where I don't feel guilty about like not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm trapped in the van so I can't do anything aside from like writing. And also it's like you want to be creative and so how else do you do it? You know, there's only so much that you can do in a van. Yeah. So I do a lot of like the lyrical writing in the van. The musical part comes, it's like separate and then kind of like piece together like the lyrics mm -hmm. with the music that fits or sometimes like you know when you're writing you already have like a melody that goes with it but you don't necessarily have the words you kind of just whatever yeah and then you can play with the lyrics that you have and you know change it and fit it with how the sound of the song is or whatever yeah and then you know I, I always throw them a bunch of ideas and like little pieces and segments and see like what they like mm -hmm. what they don't like or what they think works and then they kind of you know, I like this, or they send like their bass lines or their drums, yeah. and then we kind of just build off of our own, you know, those small ideas. Yeah. So, by our calculations, you've been a band for about 10 years now, is that right? 
10 years? 10 years, that's crazy. I guess so. It's like <laughs> a lot of our life, I guess. Yeah. Right, that's a big chunk. Yeah. It's like the, probably the longest relationship. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it's longer than my relationship. Yeah. Right? So what kept you going and creating together, and what do you have in common outside of the band that's made it work for 10 years? I know, like, Ellie and I played together in high school. And, yeah. You know, at that time, it was really hard to find other girls that played uh, instruments and yeah. so when I saw her I just thought it was like the coolest thing ever because she was not only was she a girl but she was very good at yeah. in her instrument yeah and um, so you know we had a lot of similar um, musical tastes and stuff so we started a band and then you know later we kind of went our own ways for a few years or whatever mm -hmm. but when I met Irita it was kind of the same thing like what I saw in her is that she was just as passionate about music as I was and it wasn't even like she wanted to like play shows or tour or make merch mm -hmm. like that wasn't it it was like she wanted to create you know yeah. and I really didn't really she had just picked up the bass I had been playing guitar for a few years I didn't care that she couldn't really play at the time yeah. because for me it was like first of all she looked cool second, <laughs> of, all, second of all you know it's the passion you know and that's something mm -hmm. that you, is hard to find in people you can't fake it yeah yeah and so I just knew like right away you know this is someone I want to work with or create with yeah. or be friends with you know I, I played piano since I was a kid and I mm -hmm. picked up guitar in high school was yeah. not, not good at it I learned Stairway to Heaven you know something like that. <laughs> as do we all yeah, but yeah for sure yeah. The, when we started the band together you know I think we didn't have a bass player and I was like well let's try it out yeah we kind of all wanted to make it work like when we were, first started the band like we were all down to do shows we we're down to make merch like we just wanted to like make things happen. Yeah. It was, it's like that dedication like for time for practice or mm -hmm. you know people are flaky, you know, but like we were like super like just down. That's important too. So you came up in the sort of DIY punk scene in LA. How do you feel the music scene has changed in the last 10 years? When we started, there was a huge music scene going on. I mean, obviously there was like burger records mm -hmm. and stuff, and there was a lot of like house parties, a lot of venues, mm -hmm. and we were just playing every single venue that we could, you know, like the shittiest venues. Yeah. We were doing residencies. We were just, you know, we were learning as we were going. We didn't know what we were doing, but we were just like any, we would play anything that we could, any house party. And yeah. There was a sense of like community. We were meeting a lot of other bands that were like us and we're doing the same thing. So what do you miss about the old days, like when, when you first started 10 years ago? Well, I know when we first started, like we were doing everything ourselves, mm -hmm. and I mean everything. We were making our own merch, like we were, you know, we had stencils and we're spray painting and we were like doing these little buttons that were collages. So we sat there and like cut with these tiny little yeah. scissors, all these little collages. That's and, awesome. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. We yeah. even, you know, we recorded our own EP. What well, was my ex-boyfriend who helped record it, but we... You know, we made the CD covers, we like copy, we like pasted, like glued the covers onto like, bur we burned every CD, we numbered it, we wow. spray painted it, yeah. like, you know, we were doing all that stuff ourselves mm -hmm. and it was really cool because it was like a learning process and it was fun and it was, you know, it was like a cool way to like connect and yeah. I mean now, you know, obviously like we have other artists that mm -hmm. we hire, whatever. I mean, it's still a very collaborative thing because we're very, yeah. we're very particular about, you know, the look and aesthetic of Your everything, brand. like our yeah. artwork. You know, everything. Like we have very specific ideas from every little period in the yeah. font. Like we're very like, spacey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and it's just because we have such strong like um, influences and inspirations. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, I guess that's like one of the different things. We're not as hands on as far as like the DIY thing. Like we don't mm -hmm. book our own shows like we did. We don't necessarily completely manage ourselves. Sure. Um, and it's kind of nice because I mean, you know, it does really take a, a team of people to make something like this happen, mm -hmm. you know, like touring and stuff. I mean, it would be really complicated to, to book this whole, you know, tour ourselves and Definitely. handle all that. On top of that, you're you know, you're loading your own gear, you're, you're setting up your merch, you're selling your merch, you're doing a sound check, you're playing the show, you're, you know, you're loading out, you're driving, it's a lot of work. And yeah. I, I don't know if people realize, you know, for bands on our level who are not necessarily big or small, we're kind of in this weird middle ground where mm -hmm. you still have to put in a lot of work, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, Definitely. You know, that's just one of the things. But, I mean, they're both great times. Like, I, I love the 
times when we were younger and you know, when we first started, and these times are great as well. You know, it's just it's just different. Yeah, a whole different beast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. With almost fifty thousand followers on Instagram, you're featured in the new Doc Martin documentary. Uh, a giant billboards on the Sunset Strip. You've definitely reached a certain level. Like you kind of touched on that a second ago. But how do you continue to stay like true to that initial vision? Like ten years ago, how do you? What keeps you moving forward, even though you know you are getting that level of, of fame? I feel like the everything that we like, even Doc Martens, like that's a brand that we were wearing those shoes even yep. before they approached us. So yep. them approaching us was just like, oh, cool. Like you want to help me out like you know and yeah. and you know it was a documentary that was about you know feminism and punk music mm -hmm. yeah we i mean every everyone that we work with it's something that we believe in you yeah. know or someone that we you know have respect for or have inspired us um it's not necessarily hard to like stay true to yourselves you know yeah let's talk a little bit about adding lauren um to the group yeah. and how that decision came uh and and will it become a permanent thing um, we, when we started the band, we had a second guitarist, and I think we always wanted to have another guitarist, but like I said, I mean, I'm sure people out there who are starting bands, they know how fucking hard it is to find a person, yeah. and when, you know, so we had been jamming with other guitarists, and, um, it kind of just didn't work out for whatever reason, and, you know, I, someone showed me Lauren's page and I really loved her music. She has a project called Tremors and she's in a band nice. called um, Sun Colony as well. And it was cool. She likes, she skates, she rides motorcycles and she, you yes. know, she, we, she likes all the same bands. And when I saw her, I was like, oh man, I'm like, That's our girl. Need, <laughs> we need to do something with her. Even if it's not a permanent thing, you know, I mean, you, yeah. know, you never know. But like, it's been cool to have another um, guitarist and just change up the dynamic yeah. and change up the energy and excite things and you know kind of have more room for experimenting with yeah. sound as well. It yeah. sounded she so like full really last cool night. Sound to it like a more kind of yeah. like dark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean her tones are amazing. <laughs> so we're like dark. talking about you. <laughs> when did you start playing? Have you been playing for for the last ten years as well? I mean she mentioned you played with other bands, but. Yeah, I've been playing guitar and I played drums for a while, so. Nice. And you're a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. so awesome. <laughs> so yeah. Much. yeah. I'm the perfect woman. A, a lawyer that skates and rides yeah. motorcycles. Yeah. That's awesome. So you've also added a tour manager. And. <laughs> hey, Come on down, y'all. Hey, Come on hey, down. Hey, <laughs> You've also had a tour manager this time, Al, uh, which makes a total of five people. Kind of a large group. Tell us a little bit about him and why you chose him for the job. We have actually done a tour with Al before. Really? Like a Black Mountain tour. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and actually, Ellie and I have known him since Three we were years. like seventeen. Like, yeah. so Al. Um, I was young as well. <laughs> it's funny he looks like he looked exactly the same yeah, so is. i've never known like how old Al is and, um and at the time so he was like he would come we would all jam at this house it was called the shop. the shop and everyone would just bring whatever instrument they played and we would just have these crazy big jam sessions and sometimes record them and um, our buddy who his father used to work on um, I guess like he used to repair like um, like horns and oh cool um, so, instruments yeah, yeah so there was a bunch of like instruments in the shop and stuff um, so yeah so we had known him from that time and and um, he's always remained a good friend and it you know it's just cool to have uh, someone else along yeah. that can help with extra things and Ail you know also plays music and. He makes scrambled egg. He makes great. He makes really great scrambled egg. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he t takes great photos. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and it's cool to have at least one guy. With yeah. you. It seems like a fun hang, too. So, <laughs> we have a special guest. Uh, we have a question from our mutual friend Holly in Glasgow. So, here we go. Hello, ladies. I really miss you guys and I'm honored to be here to ask you your guest question for the interview. 
You're the hardest working band in Garage Rock, regardless of gender, you're just on it and constantly working, which is incredible. I'm really excited for you to be touring with the Black Angels and for a potential new audience to see you for the first time and be blown away. My question is for you. You've toured with so many incredible bands. Who's your favourite to play with? Um, who's your best friends? The band that you're most in awe of? The band that blow you away the most? Who's your favourite and why? I'm really interested to hear what you're going to say. And I really hope you come back to Glasgow soon because I really miss you guys. Oh, Holly, we miss, miss you, Holly. We miss you too. Holly, we miss you too. She's so sweet. Oh, oh. She's such a badass. That's a hard question. Really I know. I was we like, have <laughs> been so lucky to tour with so many great bands, and everyone is so different, mm -hmm. you know. And you yeah. learn so many different things from all the different bands that you tour with. Um, yeah, it's true. It's hard. It's, it's like picking a child, ones. you know, like. You know, and it, yeah, you're like Shadi was saying, everything's so everything's so different. I think that's really cool that we can play with all these different like genres and types of bands. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the bands that I was like super stoked on touring with was The Kills, but I yeah. I was a fan before then. Like yeah. I had their all their CDs and all that. And how does that feel? You know, getting to play with a yeah. band that you've always looked up to and be like, oh my god, we're we're, we're it's, sharing a bill with this it's band. It's definitely surreal, and you just yeah. can't believe it. And then, and then on top of that, when they're actually friendly and you can be friends with them and you stay in touch or like you share, you know, it's it's very I don't know, it's it's crazy, you know. Like yeah. I still like can't can't believe that we did those tours with them. Yeah. What is probably the, your favorite festival that y'all have played? Um, Austin Sankfest <laughs> was probably, I mean, not even just like favorite festival, that was like one of the most memorable life experiences yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, that was... It was our first like major festival. We never even, you know, been able to, we've always wanted to go, but we've never been able to. So it was like yeah. just a crazy experience and then having like 13th floor elevators headline that year There's and then being months. at the ranch, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. just, it was magical. We saw fireflies for the first time. Yeah. I mean, I really? Y'all yeah. haven't seen fireflies no. before. We, we don't, don't have them in California. Really? Yeah. Wow, what a magical moment. Yeah. <laughs> You've gone through a few different tour vans over the years. What happened to the old ones and what are you driving for this tour? What how I think one of them like one of our tour vans got left in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad had to go fly back and pick it up. It was a really no. crazy experience. Like we broke down in the middle of nowhere. Nobody wanted to come and pick us up because first of all it was a huge it was like a Chevy Express, I think. Um, and so we were we were kind of stuck there for a long time and then luckily like we finally got towed somewhere and then we rented another car we transported like we left behind a lot of our belongings and just took like the minimal stuff into like the new um the car that we had rented it was like a minivan or something yeah oh, it was so no. funny and then we just did the rest of the tour on that and actually be, even before we rented a car somebody else let us borrow a van so we borrowed a van for one day, returned that, got the rental. It was like a whole thing. This is all in Kansas? Um, yes. And wow. then the, the van was like still, like it was like propped up on like the, in the auto shop. I don't know what those things are called, like the hydraulic thing. It was yes. like, and so, so we got on like a lift, one of those, um, the forks, forklift. And we were up there like loading stuff from the oh, forklift. Yeah, down. it was kind of scary. I'm yeah, sure. surprised they sketchy. let us do that, yeah. actually. Here? So you yeah. yeah. Oh we were, my god, I can't imagine carrying drums. Yeah. We like went <laughs> to the amps. Yeah, we went yeah, to the, the post amps. office and shipped back some up, like three big boxes of shit just so that we didn't get stolen while we were gone or whatever. Good, good call. Um, so yeah, I mean, but, and we only missed one show, so, you know. Oh, the, out of which, all that, Out of all one. that, yeah, like, you know, we try our best to make it work. Um, yeah. We try never to, even if we've, some of us have been some, like, sick like so like throwing up and between songs and stuff and oh, still play no. through a show you yeah know? Um, you're here to do it yeah but back to the van yeah there have been a few I mean we um, I had a few Astro vans it was like still to this day one of my favorite cars I, they're great cars oh, yeah. I mean the yeah. Astro the last Astro van I still have both of them actually one of them my, is now my dad's and the other one is my brother's and he uses it for work and stuff um, but yeah, those were real, they're really small vans, yeah. you know. They're perfect. They and are. We've evolved to a bigger, obviously, with like touring with five people or whatever. Um, we've evolved to a bigger. But yeah, we are just renting one right now. Yeah. Can you compare touring here in the in, in the U.S. versus Europe, and what you think could improve 
as far as touring and gigging in the U.S. because we all know that it's terrible. Yeah. To the Europe. It really is. I mean, in Europe, like, they treat you like you're an artist, yeah. you know? Like, they take care of you, they give you a place to stay, they feed you a hot meal. Yeah. And then, you know, there's some places like here, they're like, why are you here? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, pay, pay me to, like, let you play. You know, it's just a different, I guess, mentality. Yeah. Artists yeah. Even, like, airports. They're, the one time we got, we had our guitars and they're like, why did you bring this? <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what do you mean, why did we bring this? You think I want to fucking like, carry this thing in yeah. airport? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know how much work that is? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, gals, it's been so great talking to you. And, you. and seriously, thank you so much for the sick show last night and everything you. you're going to do moving forward. But yeah, good luck on the tour. And um, I'm Kate, and this is Moss Music TV. Hey, we're LA Witch, and you're watching Moss Music TV. Yay! Yay. That's a wrap! Yes! Yes! yes.